Welcome to Hell students watching. As we begin our lesson today, smile when you remember the answer from previous lessons. What are teeth that bite and cut your food? They're in the front, students watching. Deb. Incisors? Yes, you could also think of that almost sounding like scissors, scissors cut. So when you hear bite and cut, you think of something that cuts, incisors. What teeth have one point and tear your food? Morgan? Cuspids. Cuspids. What teeth have two points, tear and crush your food? Emily? Bicuspids. Bicuspids. What teeth grind your food? Adriana? Molars. Your molars. Well done. What do you call baby teeth? Students watching? Jimmy? Hesitary. Your clothes. Carson? It does start with the letter P. Arthur? Primary. Well done. What do we call adult teeth, Jimmy? Permanent. Permanent. Well done. What are the small holes in your teeth caused by sugars and acids? Carson? Cavities. Good. What is the sticky film of harmful germs that forms between your teeth, Dev? Plaque. Plaque is right. W give me the exact name of the eye doctor who checks out your eyes for problems, Morgan. Optometrist. Optometrist is right. What could you damage by sticking something into your ear, Presley? Eardrum. Right. Washing your hands before you eat will prevent what from entering your body, Carly? Sure. Well done. Now, as we pick up in our lesson today, we're going to find out what we can do to respond in case there's an emergency. Sometimes there are things that happen that we need to respond to very quickly. And so there's a couple of actions that we can take. We call this first aid. And so you see our word here, first aid, is that response that's given immediately when an injury takes place. Read our next phrase for us, Carson. Minor injury. Minor injuries you can help out with. We're going to talk about some of these minor injuries, simple things that may happen that you could take some steps to help out with. Read our next phrase across for us. Jacob. First aid emergency. Yes, my readers come to be ready to read. First aid emergencies happen when something needs to happen quickly and a doctor needs to be called right away. So we're going to find out and read more about what types of injuries those might be. And our next phrase, Morgan. Heimlich. Yes, and the next part with it. Uh, Maneuver. Yes, Heimlich Maneuver is a certain thing that you will do for a certain situation. We'll talk more about it in just a moment. Read these letters, ASAP. CPR. Yes, and that is also a type of first aid that's given in a certain situation where breathing needs to happen and the heart needs to start moving again. We'll talk more about these situations as we begin reading. Starting on page 74, we'll look at terms to remember and then first aid to the rescue. Begin reading for us, Arthur. Terms to remember. First aid, the help that is given immediately after someone has been hurt. First aid emergencies, injuries that require an immediate doctor's visit. Minor injuries, injuries that do not require an immediate doctor visit. Hemolytic. Close. Long eye. Hemolytic maneuver. Pulling, pulling and, pulling and, and up on the abdomen to remove an object that causes choke. And begin, or continue rather for us, Josh. First aid to the rescue. First aid to the rescue. When someone gets hurt, it is important to know what to do to help. Doing the wrong thing for an injury can cause more damage. The help that is given immediately after someone has been hurt is called first aid. It helps it helps to make the injured person more comfortable. It can also prevent infection. If, if given immediately, first aid may save a person's life. Good accuracy. Let's pause. What do we call the help that is given immediately after someone has been hurt? Students watching, Jacob. First aid. Right, exactly. Why is it so important to give first aid, Morgan? Because if you do something wrong, it can... Uh, it can um, make it hurt, make, um, make it 
works. Right, so that's why it's important to know what to do. But also, if you perform the right thing, you could help that person, and you could possibly save that person's life. So let's read about some certain situations we can help out in. Continue Carly with Until You Are. Until you are older, you will not be able to do much to, to help someone with a serious injury, but you can get help quickly. 911 is the number to call for any emergency. Find someone with a telephone who can quickly call for help. There are some injuries that you can learn to make care, to take care of. Minor injuries are injuries that do not require an immediate doctor's visit. A minor injury that is not cared for properly can become a serious injury if it becomes infected. Not right. Now let's pause. So until you're older, you might not be able to do a lot of life-saving first aid, but you can definitely get help. And getting help immediately is a great way to help someone who is injured. What is the number, number to go, call to get immediate help? Uh, Morgan. 911. Exactly, for that emergency. Minor injuries do not need the who, Asa? Doctor. Right, so there are some things that can be taken care of. They do need to be taken care of quickly, but you don't need to immediately go see the doctor. Let's read about some signs of infection. Continue, Tyra. Learn these signs of infection. The skin around the wound becomes red and tender. There may be swelling around the wound. Sometimes pus forms in the wound. Well done. So now let's pause. These signs of infection are important to look for so that you can notice if there is an infection that's been developing so that you can get some help from a doctor. Now for minor injuries, let's take a look at the next page. There are some things that we can do. You see the letters R-I-C-E in that checkbox at the top, RICE. That helps us to remember these are things we can do immediately for a minor injury. Number one, the R stands for rest. Number two, the I stands for ice, putting ice on it. Number three stands, to, stands for compress, the C, compress, means to a, close that in or put something on it that will help to prevent a lot of swelling. And then the last one, the E stands for elevate. To elevate is to lift up, and usually that would be higher than the heart. So you're laying down flat, and if your ankle is injured or your arm is injured, you want to elevate it above the level of your heart. Let's read about some types of minor injuries and specific things that we can do to help out. Continue reading, Aiden. Minor injuries. Bumps and twists are minor injuries. If you were to fall and twist your ankle or bump your leg, you should be able to care for it at home without having to see a doctor. For a bump or twist, simply rest the hurt area, apply ice, wrap or compress the area, and elevate or raise the hurt area above your heart. For example, if you are if you hurt your ankle, you would lie down and prop your ankle up on pillows so that it would be above your heart. When blood flows away from the ankle, the swelling will go down. Applying ice also helps reduce swelling. It is important that you rest the hurt area to give it time to heal. If you do not, you will end up causing the injury to get worse. Good expression, so let's pause. So if you have a bump or a twist, tell me something that you can do to help treat it, students watching. And Jacob? Put some pillows on it. Yes, to help elevate it. You can rest, making sure you put some ice on it. Wrap it so that you can keep down that swelling. Give it time to heal. If you notice that you have that bump or twist, you don't want to continue playing or you don't want to continue doing that activity because that could make the injury worse. So that rest is very important. Let's read about some things to do for minor cuts and scrapes. Continue, Emily. Small scrapes and cuts are also minor injuries. If the wound is big or bleeding heavily, find a trusted adult or call 911. For small scrapes and cuts, clean the area with soap and water. Hold a clean cloth tightly over the injury and raise it above your heart. This will help the bleeding to stop. Do not keep checking to see if the bleeding has stopped. This will cause it to start again. Once you believe the ble bleeding has stopped, wet the cloth and gently pull it off. Use the bandage to cover the injury and prevent, prevent infection. Good accuracy. Now let's pause. 
If you had that minor scraper cut, what could you do, students watching? Deb. Clean the area with soap and water? Yes, cleaning it immediately definitely helps to remove any germs that could cause infection. Then you want to hold a cloth over it. Depending on the amount of bleeding that's taking place, you might to need to get some more help to help cover that completely and help it to stop bleeding. Let's look at our technology tip at the bottom. This might be something that useful to help you if you need to call 911. So begin reading for us, Anna. Technology tip. Most cell phones are loved with a password to keep unwanted people out. But what happens if you need to call 911 and the cell phone is locked? On most smartphones, there is an emergency button on the screen where the owner would put in a password. Simply press the emergency button at the bottom and call 911. Yes, a good useful tip if you need to call 911 on someone else's phone immediately. Now we're going to read about some more emergencies that need doctor's help right away. So these are going to be first aid emergency that we need to get a doctor's help for. Let's continue reading about some of these. Yuna. Emergencies. The first aid emergency requires immediate help from a doctor. Have you ever been playing outside when a friend fell off a slide or something tall? If you think he might have injured his head or neck or broken a bone, do not move him, do not move him or try to help him up. Step back and see if he gets up on his own. Um, if he does not, find an adult and call 911. Now let's pause. This might happen to you while you're playing with your friends. A uh, well, key to remember here is try not to lift them up. You want to help. You want to try to carry them for help, but it is best if they try to get up on their own. That way you can help them best without adding to their injury. If something has happened, you don't want to add to their injury, try to encourage them to stand. And if they don't, you'll want to try to get another adult's help or call 911. So don't try to lift that person who has fallen or is injured. Just encourage them to try to stand on their own if they can't. Now, one of your friends or you might come across someone who is having a seizure. Let's find out what to do in that case. Continue, Jimmy. A seizure can cause someone to lose control of his body. The person may fall on the ground and his arms and legs may move. If this happens, remove anything near the person so that he does not hurt himself. Sometimes a seizure is a first aid emergency. Find an adult and call 911. So let's pause here. A seizure causes someone not to be able to control themselves, their movement. So you want to be able to protect them from injury. So moving those things away from them will cause them to stay safe. You can't do much to stop that seizure, so just let it take place. But then moving other things that could harm them out of the way is a key to help there. Let's look at the Bible says from Psalm 91. Read that, Carson, for us. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. fortress. My God in him will I trust. Psalm 91, 2. Yes, yeah, sometimes we come across these situations that can be challenging and maybe a little, ner you, you might become a little nervous or a little scared, but we know that we can trust in God. God will help us through any emergencies that we come across. If we come across someone who is choking, let's find out what we could do. Continue reading for us, Jackson. Choking is another first aid emergency. When someone is choking, he is not able to breathe, talk, or cough. If this happens, find an adult and call 911. The adult will stand behind the choking person and wrap his hands around the person's waist while making a fist right at the person's belly button. He then will pull in and up forcing whatever the person was choking on to come out. If that does not work, the adult may have the person lean over and hit the person's back very hard to <laughs> help an item move and come out. This is called the I Heimetic Heimlich Heimlich Maneuver. Maneuver. The Heimlich Maneuver should never be done on someone who is not choking. 
It is only for a first aid emergency. Now, pause for just a moment. Carson, come stand beside me. This would take place if someone were choking. Now, it can seem very interesting, but the Heimlich maneuver can be very helpful. You need to listen carefully because this might be something that if you're in this situation, you might be able to help out in once you're older, or you might have to have done for you if you were the one choking. Now, we never would want to play around with this because it's not a silly situation. It's a very serious situation because that choking could cause the person not to be able to breathe, and that kind of situation turns into something very serious. So the adult would end up taking a fist and placing it here and then coming around to push up to force the object to come out. And sometimes an extra pat on the back might be needed to help that object come out. Thank you, Carson. You may return to your seat. But that Heimlich maneuver is a very helpful thing in a very scary situation that could cause a serious injury if that choking situation is not resolved. So you would never want to play around with the Heimlich maneuver. It's only used for those serious emergencies. Let's find out what to do if an electrical shock were to take place. Continue reading, Jacob. <clears throat> Electrical shock is a first aid emergency that is caused by electricity. You have probably been you have probably been told not to play outside during a thunderstorm. You should also be careful when using electrical devices near water or plug them into electrical outlets. Following these warnings will keep you safe from an electrical so shock. When someone has had an electrical shock, it is important to remember not to touch him. Find an adult and call 911. So let's pause. Making sure that you stay safe and making sure that you don't get that electrical shock is very important. It is a very serious situation and it could cause a lot of very serious injuries. So you want to think, you want to take the practical, the right steps. You don't want to play around with it and be silly. If you sense something like that could be happening, you make sure that you don't touch that person. You get an adult and you call for help immediately. Now, if someone were to become unconscious, that means they are not able to respond, what can we do to help? Let's read about it. Continue, Lexi. When someone is unconscious, Unconscious, whether he is breathing or not, is a first aid emergency. The first thing to do is find an adult and call 911. If the person is breathing, stay with them until help arrives. If the person is not breathing, an adult should start CPR. CPR is necessary to keep the person heart beating until Help arrive. Good accuracy. Caden, start with during CPR. CPR is necessary to keep the person's heart beating until help arrives. During CPR, an adult will put his hands together, one on top of the other, and push hard and fast in the middle of the person's chest until help arrives. CPR is first aid emergency only. You should never practice CPR on a friend. First aid is meant to help people in need. When a first aid situation happens, the most, the most important things to remember are to stay calm, find help, and call 911. Ask God to help the injured person and those providing help. Good smoothness. Pause. Why do you think staying calm is so important, students watching? And Yuna. Because, because if you could, like, Exactly right. If you overreact or if you are not thinking carefully and clearly, you could do the wrong thing or you could do it too much or in the wrong way. So you want to stay calm and do those practical things that you know you can do. The Bible says, read our verse, Presley. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength of a very present help in trouble. Some 46, 1. Good. Now let's look at our comprehension check. Take out a pencil. What is help that is given immediately to people who are hurt? Students watching. Morgan. First, first aid. First aid. What is the emergency telephone number to call? Adriana. Good. 911. What are injuries that do not require immediate attention from a doctor? 
They do not require immediate attention. Cadence? Minor injuries. Good, minor injuries. This one, what are the first aid steps for bumps and twists? Rice, give me all that you can remember. Cadence? You cross the leg so the swelling will go down and you what is put R? ice pack on it. Okay, so you have the I for ice, the E for elevate, Elevate. What does the R and the C stand for, Jacob? The R is to rest, and the C is to just let it heal. Yes, or to compress. And you could do that with a type of stretchy bandage like this. You're going to take that stretchy bandage, and you'll be able to wrap that injured area. So if it is a leg or an arm that is not uh, has been injured, there's a bump or a twist, you can use the stretchy bandage to wrap it around that leg or that elbow or that arm, that injured area, and that's a compress or a compress to push it together so the swelling won't get too large. So rest, ice, compress, and elevate is what RICE stands for there. Number five, what is the most important thing to remember when someone has had an electrical shock? Morgan? Do not touch them. Right, do not touch them. And number six, what are the most important things to remember in an emergency situation? Carson? To not panic. Right, don't panic. Stay calm. Call 911 if you need to. Once you finish that, take out your worksheet from our previous lesson that we started together. Our worksheet number two that we started in our previous lesson. So close your book, worksheet out. Let's look at the back. We're going to place a check mark beside each correct first aid procedure. There may be more than one answer. Look at number one with me. What are the procedures for bumps and twists? There are three here that apply. Dev? Fly ice, rest the hurt area, and... Raise the heart, hurt area above the heart. Perfect. Apply ice, raise the hurt area above the heart, and rest the area. Number two, what are the procedures for scrapes and cuts? There are three that apply. Morgan? Clean the scraper cut. Tightly cover the area with a clean cloth. Raise the hurt area above your heart. Well done. Number three, what are the procedures for a seizure? Pro, excuse me. What are the procedures for a seizure? There are two that apply. Lexi? CPR. Not quite. Jacob? Call 911. Call 911. Find that trusted adult. There's one other thing. Jackson? Move objects away from the person. Move objects away from that person. Well done. Students watching, you can complete numbers four through eight with your on-site teacher.